Hello everyone, welcome day four um, to our crowd testing tutorials. So when I say crowd testing again, uh, we have to cover UI API, uh, basic mobile app testing and so on. And it is very important team in terms of uh, the fact that how we write manual test cases and what do manual test cases have within them. Um, you know, when we talk about it, how do we create something called as this user stories? How do we write something that is more behavior driven development? So there are multiple things that we look at um, when we are creating a manual test case team. But most importantly, what does a manual test case have? You divide the entire application under test. That's what we call the AUT into different modules. So what do I mean by it? I will take a, this as a sample application team. You can also use it to register, automate, and so on. Um, why did I open a private one? What am I, where am I going? Anyod.com slash test. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? So I've already logged in. Yeah, now I know why I went in a private window or incognito browser. So here's the URL. I want you all to also visit this. Um, and there are a couple of things I want you to do, team. Remember this very clearly. Watch my um, screen. You can go back to that link that I put on the chat. Um, exactly the same link um, that is there. And how we talk about an application itself. So when I say modules, what are modules? You can break key functionalities into one module based on the func workflow flow of application usage. So I'm writing a big long sentence, um, but look at it this way. So if I say this whole box is an application, any application could have a lot of things and everything doesn't have to be the same size. There could be, you know, different sized uh, modules. So overall, this is my application under test. I divide that into various modules. Now, the reason I'm saying these are UI modules is because at the end of it, how the end user usage um, uses the product. No, no end user uses an API command, um, you know, or any technical Selenium or Java. They don't use that. They only look at the application on the front end on a browser or a mobile application. They click, they swipe, they you know to use the keyboard, they type. So those are the interactions that they perform on it. So, but for us, when we are creating this, we divide them into uh, something very logical for us. So this could be something like user management. Things like sign up, sign in, forgot password, profile settings, um, so on. Now let us say this could be, uh, if let us say for example, it is an e-commerce or a banking application, okay? Then you have your checking account details, for example. Then you have, you know, transfer funds as a module that is available to use users. Does every user have to use every feature in a given application? Not necessary. But they, as they keep using it, um, you know, they know that, oh, I have an additional thing. I can also do this. There is also this. Just like your WhatsApp also what we could do. Um, what was it? Uh, that was creating, okay, user management, um, then current account, transfer funds. Um, let us say you want to open account. That is another detail. You can create an account and so on team. Um, maybe tax. Uh, returns that you can file or credit card is another module. So each of these will have their own scenarios. There are multiple things that we could perform on each of these actions. Correct, you're right. This customer support that is there, the basic one, uh, help teams and so on. Uh, then there is, you know, general links, HTML links like about us and all this. Now, to look at a big application like this, how many test cases? What is a test case team? When we talk about a test case, 
it's um, AUT is done, then modules. Then I have test cases. How can we define a test case? Does someone want to try and speak it out? As an answer, if you can raise your hand, anyone? Test case or test scenarios? Hands team, let's see. I really like the value you all bring as well, team. It's not a one way thing. You can always watch videos and learn. But when you involve into something that we're doing together, then it becomes very interesting. OK, I'm going to unmute a few of you who have raised your hands. So yes, please. Some kind of a definition for a test case. It's a scenario where uh, series of steps what we the action we perform on okay which achieves a certain purpose yeah. so there is primarily an objective that any user Take it WhatsApp, take it banking application, take it a game, take it even OTT app like Netflix and so on. We still perform a certain ta task or activity. Anyone else? Yes, Pallavi, I unmuted you. Krishna, you're unmuted as well from my end. This is Lori, Lori? and yes, a please. test case is what you are testing, how you are testing, and what the expected results are. Mm, There's correct. three elements to it. The what, right. how, and the results. What we are doing and? How we are we doing it? Mm-hmm. And what are the expected results? Very nice. So this is critical team. Now, can someone tell me exactly? So it's a small user story. Very small user story. Correct. That is independently that can be independent. I made a independently uh, performed. So um, why do we have to write a test case? Documentation. Why do we need documentation? Yeah, go ahead, please. In order to validate the user stories, the requirements, Mm -hmm. Whether it's working as expected or not mm -hmm. from the user perspective. Okay. What else could be? And I'm asking very um, regular questions um, so that, you know, nothing prepared as such, something that is very logical for us. Why do we write these test cases with, you know, what do I have to do? So How do we... I have to do? And... Mm -hmm. Direct the user. Sorry, once yeah. again, anyone? Yeah, go ahead. Somebody is answering. I mean, it directs the user on the actions that they have to perform, and uh, um, we can identify the gap between the user stories and the actual results that we get. Mm -hmm. so to identify the discrepancies or gaps between uh, what is developed, you know, um, we really need to have a test case and anyone in the uh, um, company can uh, pick up the test case and execute it. 
correct very nicely said team or company project there are also projects that people work on can execute in a similar fashion so when we primarily repeat um, based on proper documented steps that everyone must follow what is the advantage of writing it this way like i mean i can write it very regularly okay please test login i'll say harpreet i'll say jaya please go test um, you know um, whatever else uh, all these features i can give individually correct can i have everyone on muted if you're not speaking please thank you let me erase this drawings also what is the purpose of it the two main things we're forgetting here team and why are we doing this validation what does validation do for us it confirms the results it confirms the requirements are active or not active but fulfilled the requirements nice. are met the requirements are met sure and they pass qa ha huh, there we are so we are we still didn't talk about defects and bugs team correct oh that comes that's that one comes the when they when they fail <laughs> Correct, but that's why we write. Now, the the reason is more important. Why are these defects and bugs important? From how you write a test case, let us say we wrote. I wrote hundred good test cases, and there's another approach with a large team again. Another approach. I wrote hundred test cases, not in a great fashion, very less documented. I'll still get defects or bugs. Let us say I got the same one, or maybe a little different. What is the what is good about writing a good great test case anybody can use it and it will validate the requirements are correct right. yes anyone will perform the same exact way that is correct and also for you to re-verify if it is uh, an issue or not so we are able to replicate that situation easily so for example if you're in a let us say a chemical lab and you're trying to work towards let us in a drug manufacturing for something like a covid vaccine so there are a lot of things that you will need to test experiment and see if it works or not so for each of them they have to want to document so you can go back and also see oh i got a defect but how did i get the defect now when i'm replicating let us say i any user should be able to do the same exact way that is important and when we get defects you are able to um, part of something we call it traceability metrics also so we will cover this but primarily you are able to go to the root cause of an issue i know exactly where it failed instead of telling uh, to a user that a uh, checking account is not working i will say in the checking account um you know view balance or print report is not working is a very specific incident and in that if you say that a step is not working it becomes important more so mm -hmm. how do you make sure that we have a good test case is by writing very very detailed test steps they have to be extremely detailed again what does a test step mean be it a human we still have to talk about what to do and also we have to guide as to how or where that has to be performed and then we talk about expectations that it worked or not when i teach an automation tool that is the same exact things and the main 
questions are what where and you know result as to what we expected what is the actual expected versus actual now test steps require what additional information now let me let me take a simple excel sheet <clears throat> If I have to write a test case here, I will try and put an identification to each test case. I will then describe what it does overall. Then I will say what is my step one. Oops. Now um, is my scroll lock or something? Okay. <laughs> Let's say this is TC001. This is an okay way to name it, but um, it is not a great way to name it because it does not tell me anything more about it. I would rather say TC001 underscore mm, change password. Then I'll say TC02 underscore login TC03 underscore um, profile change. Apart from change password, a lot of other things. Now, I also want to write where do I take my scroll out one second? I don't know where my scroll lock is in this keyboard. <laughs> okay. Um, see, now what has happened? This, these are all grouped together for more login, US, user, and so on. If I say TC004 and so on, there'll be about 500, 600 like this. I again will start with underscore check account balance tc002 underscore um, transfer balance but you already have a tc02 so you're duplicating Correct. you're right so, so that you're, is you're not one a and great two are wrong. Way to... they should be i'm sorry mm. so that's not exactly a great way to document and it is not going to be easy as well so they need then what do we do uh, they are unique right now if you check. Not but the numbers the need to be unique. Not necessarily. I'll tell okay. you why. Okay. I could then do something. I could group them into a module and say this is my M01 underscore user management module. And under this, I have. these three test cases then i have another module here this is how we're talking about organizing our test case documentation checking account now this is not the most unique or best way out of it you can use tools like jira and so on but if we use an excel as a simple one then how do we do it now here we go so these three represent for me one module home just do a little bit of background color and these two represent to me another module oops bad Bear with me I, when I do a few of these things, team. I just want to get the point also very well uh, set with you. Now look at this. How many steps will change password have? It's just not one step. I cannot say that, oh, it's one step all done and so on. So how do I put? So I have multiple steps in the sense that each of this. And. Oh, I need a scroll. How do I take Print function? Just, cut, just do a copy delete. paste. Copy.
If you copy that and go to line uh, one, I'm... that should work. All right, and team, please. am I back? Yeah, you're back. Okay, great, thank you. I put my system to sleep, so let me not figure <laughs> that out right now. Um, so, uh, yes, now I have to insert. So insert copied cells, insert one more copied cell. So minimally, if I have to put, then I'll say, open the application or I'll say AUT, go to click change password, enter username and click submit. Now, for a human, when we give this details team, it is very easy for them to understand, to understand the action and then they need to see where we need to click on identify this and then we have data that we need to provide to do this team so but where if I are have you to say where are you changing the password you're entering the username and you're clicking submit but you're not changing the password because the, the next step column? will be for you to go check the email you'll get a confirm so at least here then the last one what we will do is so again this is step two verify password confirmation email then you enter the new password twice and so on so it will take a few more steps i'm saying as minimally as we can even if we have to think about it it's about four or five steps if I have to actually calculate the number of times I click and do something, it would be maybe 10 to 15 steps overall that mm -hmm. may involve a change password. But what is important here is every step, if I can break down, has something to do. A command like open something or click something, type some text, you know, uh, verify if everything is correct. And let me put some borders to it. Now I'm talking about where. So here, human is smart. We know at least everyone who works on the application will say, okay, this is the home page, this is the dashboard, and so on. Now, as this application and a test, look at this, for example. Now, here is my application. I come to the URL. I click on, let us say, forgot password or Actually, for change password, you need to log in and then click on go to my profile settings, click on change password and so on. This is more of a forgot password. Um, and this, what am I trying to say, is basically saying, okay, here is your forgot password link, right? If I say click on forgot password, I'm sure if, if you don't focus, you'll miss this text. But we expect the users to know, at least the test engineers, that where is what be aware of your ui of your user interface so you know exactly how your menu bar is on now let us say you log into the application then you'll see dashboard so you got to be aware that where test plan is where test setup is where are reusable components when you go through a kt on the application and a test these are some of the important things not just the workflow as to what happens if I click here and so on. The layout is also important team for you. That way you're able to say, okay, cool, this I'm able to do. Now click where, again, the human is smart. They're able to perform these actions for us. Um, verify where, what, but each of them requires some data. When I say open, I will require a URL. If I say click, then I need to know where is that button or link. Something should be there. And that's basically something like an XPath or ID or name or CSS that we give to identify elements. And that is an important thing. Then I have to say type, but type, I need to find out username. What do I have to type? Some username or email. I need to also say the where I need to type element for it. If I have to verify, then I'm expecting something, an email, 
or a text and so on. So the importance of expanding. So if I send this exactly this way, uh, as humans also will make mistake because not everything is standardized. Not everything is very explicit, very clearly mentioned. There is some arbitration that can happen. So to avoid it, you have to break them down into as small pieces as possible. It has to be very detailed. Break it down to the smallest possibilities. Yes, it requires some manual documentation. Every scenario we have to write it. Now, test steps, like I said, we spoke about that I need to do know the command or action. I need to have the uh, location as to where to do. Humans don't need. Automation tools, that's the only difference here, team. They need a guide to the UI as to where is what. And then we have our test data. In this, your steps can be, when I click on this, this has to happen. If it is, it has not navigated to my home page, then there is a problem. I'm expecting to see this home page. Okay, and so on. Now, what is any art and what is it trying to do? Let me explain this to your team. So you got the perspective that your application under test can be broken down into modules. Each module can have multiple test cases or scenarios. Each test case will have so many test steps. That is your documentation that is necessary. Be it UI or API, you still have to say what we are expecting to do. And then you have your results as to what will happen. Within test steps, what I call as keyword, element identification and test data. Okay, now what we did is in any odd, we used Selenium WebDriver and Java test ng, and we created the entire framework team. I don't know if I have the source here. I'll show it to you tomorrow, the entire code walkthrough. Um, this is just some, no, this is not my new art right now. I'll come to it. So I want you to understand the fact that you can write automation tests with zero code. But to do that, what is it that we need to understand? Let's go to, I'll quickly give you a, uh, KT on what each of the steps mean and how we put them. I want you today to spend about 15 20 minutes and write some simple scenarios or edit something that is already there. Okay, now uh, most importantly, application under test is a static page. We don't use anything from here right now, not even the URL. Everything is given elsewhere in the test data, but this is a sheet we kept just in case we want to have configurations. Modules will have the list of all the modules. What you want to execute in a run is selected here. If you say no, none of the test case in the module will get executed. This is the unique identification, this column B. Based on this column, we have test cases. And I'll say for this module, there's only one right now in here. For this module, there are two test cases. You can have multiple, but each one have to be listed. So this is my list of all the test cases in the entire application. But I can sort it by module. So you can do a lot of filtering and sorting as your application grows. Test data set, just keep it to Chrome as is team. We will talk about it or you can name it to anything. You can call this, let me save this as demo underscore. Which website should we do? I don't know. Um, something else for now. Even if I say Google. Okay, so I'll say this is TD101. And here I can say TD01, comma TD02. What do I mean? I have parameterized my test data and I'm ready to use that to be able to execute it. You can make everything accordingly as um, that value. One second.
this is where you get your chance to edit or do whatever you want in. Okay, this guy won't work this way. Now, test case is basically one piece of execution that we will do, right? So, when I say that I have different sets of data, towards the end of it, there is a sheet called test data. Here, I can call this as this is the name that we give TD01 or TD02. This, you can change your browser names or whatever. You can run the same set of data on different browsers. Or you can say both are Chrome and have different incorrect details or, you know, depending on the user, some other custom details for that user. So you can say based on roles, you can pay say um, based on different things, what a set of test data is. Here on the first column, there is the unique name that we give to it and we will call it. Where will we call these things, T? So back to test cases, I basically say execute test case, blah, blah, blah. For example, this dashboard UI validation for not only test data set one, but also test data set two. And this is an instruction that any odd automation tool will take to be able to generate what to do. Now comes the most important one, test steps everyone. So in here, did I explain all of this to you earlier? I think most of it, but I want you to uh, do certain validations on this team, if I may. If you want me to do a little bit more detailed explanation, I will, but start making certain things. So if I want to write a new module, for example, here, okay, let me write it. I'll say Google in the same one and a mate underscore Google, just playing with Google. That's my unique module ID. I take that. I have it in now in test cases sheet. And here, what are the test cases that I want to run? See, like I said, you don't have to have unique ones. I can repeat TC01 here again. And here, I'll just say uh, verify title. And to the same, actually, let me write a little bit more. Verify title. Yes. And I'll use one set of data, TT01. Um, now I'll copy this. I'm going to put it here. The next one is, I'll say search. That's the name that I have. And here I'm trying to check the search functionality. So, Again, this is severities and so on team are something more deeper that you'll go through, but I want you to uh, be able to make this simple changes and be able to edit. So I'm saying I don't want to execute any other test case except for this for now. That is all I do. So I have the power to choose what I want to execute and not right here. You can also do it at a module level where I choose that only this is executing and none of these. Either one is fine, but module rules over the test case. For a verified title, what is the thing that I need to write here? So two things that are important team now. I need the module ID and the test case ID. Come on. Test steps. And let me paste it here. Okay. Now this is going to repeat a few times team. So I'm going to hopefully, I don't know how many put it till here. In here, I'll have unique steps. So that's my next column. And this, I should be able to drag, drop, and generate a series. <laughs> Just when I fill series. Okay, there you go, thank you. Now here are the commands team. The first one is we are doing a UI test. So we are opening browser. So we are talking about something called as a built-in keyword. Those are the standard keywords that we do on Selenium. Everything that you want to perform has been pre-programmed. So you don't need to write that code again and again. You just have to say what we have to do. So here, the command that we're saying is 
something to do with the browser. So if you check with browser also, it got something. I don't know where it is. Close browser is there. Where is my open browser? That's the command. Now, if I don't know which is the correct one, yeah, there you go. Number 43 here, open browser. So this one is helping me to open a browser. That is the one that goes into the keyword column team. Very important. So I just say, what is the command? Now, this is almost writing a manual test case. So the idea is don't write a manual test case and then try and write everything again for an automation. Can we do both together? That is what we're saying. Opening a browser, then um, now go to google.com, correct? So I'll say this is what I want to do. So next is built-in keyword. I have to go to google.com. So we will come to that built-in keywords, what we have to do. Uh, then I have to get title. And then I will close the browser. I'm done with my test case. And that is primarily my manual flow. Now let me give a few more details that will help me to automate the same thing team. So to how do I go to an application? I can look at some of the keywords that were used here team earlier uh, to be able to get a decent idea or you can again go back to built-in keywords. But primarily each of them is very easily understandable um, like more English like. There you go. Navigate user is what will help us navigate. These next three columns are actually important team as to what input it takes. So this takes something like test data. It is yes. So what does it mean back here to test steps? I'll say navigate browser. And for here, I have to enter details team. So. And your details would consist of how to open the browser, how to navigate the browser. Right, correct. So now let's think about open browser. What could basically be a variant or a variable into opening a browser? Click. No, but uh, which browser we want to open oh, okay. becomes important. So that is where we say in test data, I will put that information. So here I can go on the test data type and choose one time use. And then say Chrome is my browser. Now, if I want to navigate a browser, do I need to give it any detail, team? Yes. URL. Yes, that's correct. So I need to provide the URL for it. So that's again a one time use. And I'll say HTTPS colon slash slash Google dot com. Now I'll say I want to get title. Let us see if there's a built in keyword for it. Title. Verify title is there. Verify the title of the page. I want to see if the title is correct or not. So for this, what is important team? I need to get the title compared to something as a test data. So let me explain to you. So verify title is my keyword. And here my one time use is the title. I'll say welcome to Google. Is that what I'm expecting or not? I don't know. And then I will close browser. That is the keyword for it. All I did team is write these four steps or four lines. Now I'm just going to quickly give it a little color. And I hard coded what I want it to do out here. Why didn't I write anything for close browser? Anyone? Because we to don't close see the browser. Mm -hmm. What? 
the browser is already closed so right but do i need to provide any information to it no no because when did you when did you close the browser oh close browser when did you close the browser and how did you close it correct when is number four after get title how is selenium oh, close to know browser how to close but browser. how do you but you doesn't say how to ha huh. so how to is the code that is written now if i have to specifically say which browser to close or something then it's a different thing okay in this case close the same browser that is open so i don't need to provide any other details so this doesn't take any more inputs so it's an easy one easy command with nothing much to do so depending on the command we have different things now so far we have not typed anything or clicked on a button in the application in this test case team but let's see if this is working as is so i have few blanks let me not keep them and delete them just one test case that i wrote for you team i am expecting you all to be able to try to write a few more test cases like this practice on it before tomorrow's session all right now where did i put this hopefully in my any art folder let's see so if i go to any art runner let me make sure c drive i think oh sorry a a runner 2021 runner master did i save yeah there you go demo underscore google so i'm going to start with my executable jar file but if you remember yesterday in lorry's system we had an issue i don't know that is sorted out executable no, jar that, file no that's still there that's somehow i have to Do open it with something and then thing. it does open yeah. i've downloaded Say, it four times and it still has the same issue hmm. okay. so but if you scroll back to open with go back to open with and i'll show you what i open it with Okay. The that one platform Open binary. JDK platform. Yeah, that's how yeah. it works. Mm, I I don't know why it is having an issue. So we saw this in few machines, and that's why it should be something that we can do on your system, like like uninstall your JDK, reinstall it, make sure your path variables are correctly set. so sometimes you'll have too many java as to where your jdk is variables here we just need to do a little clean up there but without going there the alternate that i showed is this demo run batch file so if i just kind of um, click on it and edit it it nothing but has couple of command prompts i'm not running it right now I'm just saying edit there is open within this it says edit but it's still why is it asking me to i'm not running okay there you go <laughs> so it's just a java hyphen jar any or dot jar command t if i have something called as a executable jar which we created for any or i can use this command to run it as a first argument it takes that excel name so i can save this as demo run dem google i'll say google run whatever name i want oops i should have changed something and here change that demo name to demo underscore google save as dot bat team batch file and say all files so just save this if it is not working so what does it do you have two options to execute if i click on this google run it will try and run it automatically or if i click on any or jar you'll get the ui in front of you the most important thing that you are giving as input here is your sheet name so let's run this traditional way what i'm expecting it to see is open browser go to google.com get some title and then close it that's about what i'm expecting as of now so it's navigated to google and close team very good Now, could you show me the batch file again so I can copy that? Yeah, sure. Just screenshot so, of that. So I can do that. Thank you. Oops, oops. Okay, one second. So I was busy Sorry. watching and I wasn't 
copying anything down. Thank you. Yeah, you're most welcome. Okay, got Let it. Let me put that. So the only change is the Excel file name. And then we rename that to Google Demo Run. Google underscore Google, yeah, however you want, because okay. you're going to double click and execute it at that time. I see. Thank you. Welcome. So now, team, you basically have the results folder. And in the results folder is where you will see today uh, one folder got created. Remember yesterday I did two parallel runs demo and demo underscore error. Uh, but then it was I gave the same test names. So it overwritten on it. But let's look at this. If I see a screenshot folder, that means that there's something wrong or some test case failed team. This is a. Uh, sorry, this is a HTML report that we used. Um, extend reports to be able to create, but we also have detailed Excel reports. Let's look at this easier HTML drillable report. It'll tell me what I did. All right. Um, at a high level, it'll tell me that there were four steps. Internally, it did some 27 overall steps to execute. It took 10 seconds. 75% passed in the sense that three steps passed, one step failed overall what time it started, what time it ended. And I have one test case. These are the four steps and I see open browser passed. I can click and see a little bit more details. Get title I can see. It's doing. And welcome to Google is expected and it says actual is null. I don't know why it's saying actual is null. And this is how the application looked at that point in time. Let's see what is the actual expected. When I go to google.com, it just says Google. But why didn't it get it? Um, what am I doing? So if I just take my mouse over, I can see. Or right click. Go to view page source. That's easier. Do a control F for title. The first thing that you find HTML tag, that is your page title. So now I'm going to correct my demo underscore Google and say the title that I'm expecting is actually not welcome to Google, but Google. Now, the same test case, this is Google. I can also repeat it in any other application and so on, but let's try and write one more test case team. Um, let's see why it failed. Is it, but why did it give me a null? If you notice this error, it says expected welcome to Google, but actual was null. Actual is what you see on the application. So the fact that every step is detailed with what and how is important for us to be able to identify if it's an actual defect, how to replicate the defect or how to correct our automation test to make it better. One could be the fact that sometimes this page loads are happening very quickly team. Maybe we didn't wait it enough for the page to navigate till that URL. I can May I ask you how did you how did you execute these? I just saw you writing them but I didn't see you execute them. Sure. So I will in a second please. Thank you. Um, I'm inserting one step in between here now, team. I'm editing that test case. And here I'm saying wait for three seconds. Even for this hard wait, I got, we've, we have a command inside, wait for seconds. You can wait for an element to be visible and so on that we can write in the next test cases. Here, all I have to do is look at anything previous steps that I did wait for seconds and there's a one time use of the number of seconds here team. So am I in the right row? Yes, I'm in this row and one time use I'll say three seconds. That is how much time I'm expecting to wait. Now my test case is saved. How is it that I'm executing this test case? Very simple when any odd framework I say Java hyphen jar demo underscore Google dot Excel is it's coming to this Excel sheet. 
it reads everything in this excel but what is most important it only is interested in which modules to execute here i said execute every module but why did it not execute every module why did it only execute my google because for my test cases i put a no to everything only two test cases i wanted it to execute yes for verify title and search we didn't write anything for search yet so that's an empty test case so this is where i gave as to what it should do now let's try and rerun this once and let's also try and see how we can write another search functionality also to this let's do this also so now my test case is different search so search will be something similar to this why don't i start with this itself i need to um select destination presenter to choose paste what okay control c control v and team these names have to be exact so whatever you gave here it has to match because that is what the framework will look at i hope you do just um, yes that's correct so see i here i gave 2 point because i may have 40 steps and each time i can't go about putting um, you know changing everything so you can just say that that's a one step into it but here let me change it 3 4 5 we need to remove the, the same browser, browser. I'm sorry. No, I said we need to remove the close browser step, right? To search in order to search criteria. No. Or we are opening no. the page again. You're yeah, right. So I'm writing independent tests that yeah. can run independently without a uh, link to the previous test. Let me use another color for this. Okay. So we are closing browser here and opening another browser. Going to google.com is common. maybe i'll wait for 3 seconds but here i'll say type um what shall we type team something see you then what is that one was keep going something i said it learn <laughs> it learn okay now i'm i'll take something else for now weather in los angeles for example now this is the term i want to type so now it becomes a little bit more important um, interesting team here i need to type i need to put in details so how do i put uh, any text into an edit field uh, for that the specific one is type text now when i said type text let's look at google.com see it doesn't matter what the application is team it's just about um how you look at it and how you try and work around with it so here i'm saying type google or something here right whether in los angeles so this element is important so for this it needs to know where to type because there could be other fields in the page it needs to know what to type i luckily know what to type that will go in my test data so here it is type text that is the command or keyword and here what to type i will say is weather in los angeles that is what i want to uh, test or type the only thing additional that you have to put here is how i can identify that element all right and for that all you do is use your any browser will have something called as inspect element team so just right click on it and say inspect on that element it will show you the html code behind it if you watch some of the free videos that we have also team you can go a little bit deeper but primarily you can take some combination of details that are provided here to uniquely identify this one then i can do any action or keyword performance on that so here if i don't know how to get an xpath or the identification just right click and say copy xpath i don't know what it got i hope it got a 
an absolute one. Uh, I, I hope it didn't, but either one, as long as it works, that's fine. And here I'm going to say the way I'm identifying it is by X path. And let me paste that. I think, yes, it got the end. Or I can write a simple X path like name equals to Q, either one team. If this doesn't work, we will go back to the other. So keep it simple. Don't try and overdo it. Get your fundamentals into it. Now, you'll see that I've used, you've been using one time use and, and not reusable element or reusable test data like out here. Why? Now I see that, oh, you know what? My browser is repeating, my URL is repeating. Yeah, this I'm expecting Google here, some other text, so this is different. Um, here I'm not closing the browser yet, team. I have to do something else, so I'll, let me delete this. Instead of deleting, you know what I do sometimes? A step, I'll just say in that, no run. Like, don't run it. Since it's different from what we wrote here, it will not run because it looks at the exact test case name to be able to execute. So I'm not trying to close. That's why this is not on a run. I'm just seeing if weather in Los Angeles shows up there. Maybe I want to wait for three more seconds after that. I'm taking longer time in the sessions team. Um, I Just because I have the other session, JPACT interviews, so I'm a little behind for that. Give me a minute, we'll get there. I'm again waiting for a few seconds. So what am I doing again? Open Chrome, go to google.com, wait for three seconds, enter weather in Los Angeles. Um, then we didn't enter anything. So look at what we're doing, how we have to give each and every detail step. After you type, what do you do? You have to click on the search icon or you have to hit enter key. That becomes important team. So this is the next steps. We'll continue tomorrow. But I want you to look at this and write a few steps. Let's do an execution of what is there. So see, how do I run these two test cases? Yes to this, yes to this. Make sure that module Google is selected. I'm doing it for different applications in the same sheet, but still it's the same. It's yeah. So now let's go back and rerun. So I already have Google here, so I can just double click this. It'll do the same, uh, but I also have a console output that I can look at easily. So team. Um, assignment, please. I want you to take any application apart from google.com and please write a few scenarios and let's get them tomorrow. Then I'll explain about how we create this reusable library, a very similar to a page factory and data driven framework. And then I'll talk about how we create UDKs, user defined keywords. That's the last and important one with which you'll understand how we create the concepts of keywords or functional flows and so on. Any questions, please? Did Do you have this what recorded happened? so we can look at it? I need to cover some things I didn't catch at all. Is this recorded yeah, someplace I, where I can access it? Uh, it will be right on go.it learn. Okay. And I'll also put it on um, YouTube channel. Okay. All right, team. So this is what I got. I did not observe my eyes were somewhere else while the execution happened, but at least we have a trail to look at. Again, going back to the dashboard here now, you know, more steps overall. Everything passed, that is good. But does that mean that I'm very happy about it? Not necessarily. There could be false positives, something that I did wrong, but it didn't capture. Look at get title, for example. It says it worked fine. It got the title. This is what we expected. It passed. Uh, if you want to make sure if it's, uh, you know, doing it is correctly or not, give an incorrect title and rerun. Let's look at search. So it says it's did everything, but I didn't see it action. So I want to rerun again, but I'm going to spoil my get title once again. And I'll say this is Google one. And just save it. Don't even have to close it. Go back to your in your runner. And double click Google run. Okay, that's my first test case opened. The, though I, do, I don't have closed browser for the second test case, 
it'll still close the browser because it's the last test case in my entire suite. So otherwise, it would have kept it open. Now it's opening the next one. Let's see if it types it in here. There you go. So I did type. We have to now hit an enter command or so on. And you will also notice something about the executions as it happened um, with the fact that um, the highlights, how we highlight the application. Let's uh, say yes to some, some of the test case here, team. Just a simple dashboard UI validation I'll do uh, or login validation, that's fine, yes. And nothing else. So three test cases now. Let's make sure that module also is selected for yes and just rerun it now let's look at the results before i run it again so it's a constant cycle team you create new tests you experiment with them you keep doing it till you get the correct results so now i assuming that the title failed so yes the get title failed google one is expected actually is, again it's saying null that is not correct it's printing wrong this should not print null it's printing the wrong thing here because the page is loaded also. Let's see. But when I give the right information, it is getting it. I want to look at this again tomorrow, team. Uh, but search worked. We saw it also in action. But after typing, we have to click on the search icon or hit and enter. Go to the next page, verify that it's getting results from that, and then close browser. That's my completed test. Um, so, team, please do write some scenarios like this by taking any application. So instead of you know writing it in a different format, we're writing it in this any odd format. Any questions, please, that I can quickly take. And sorry, JPAC members, if you're here, give me another couple of minutes. We'll go to the other one. So your action items are very simple, team. Um, write a few scenarios. Take any different application. The more the challenging, the better it will be for us to review tomorrow. All right, everyone, thank you so much. We'll see you back tomorrow, same time. Okay, and thank you. Hopefully, we'll be able to complete. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank the you, any thank you. side of it tomorrow, and then we can go to the mobile app testing too. Bye, all. See you Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.